Those of y'all at home, make sure you have your slides out. I apologize, my voice is struggling a bit today. Um, hi, everybody. I hope you had a good weekend. Hello. We are starting our last unit of the semester today. So that is wonderful news for everybody. Um, sh sh we are still heavily within acids and bases. Um, so we're kind of continuing uh, the journey into some more fun stuff. Um, so let's kick it off with something called buffers that is going to be new for you for sure. All right, so what is a buffer? Look here. You shouldn't be copying. You already wrote it, you already wrote it over the weekend. Um, it turns out that the majority of solutions that you build and that then have a pH that belongs to them is the pH they need to exist. Meaning <coughs> that if I were to build a solution based off acids and bases doing whatever they're doing, and then I were to do something to the system to drastically alter the pH, then it would probably make the system be just a completely different system. It, it would make it stop behaving the way it originally was if you alter the, B, the pH in a uh, significant way. Buffers are a way to protect that change. A buffer system is one that is set up to where whether you add acid or base to the established solution, it won't allow you to change the pH. The best example, real world example for you for a buffer system is you, your blood. Anybody know what pH your blood is? 7.7.4. 7. 7. It's 7.4. 15, 7.7. .7. All right, it's 7.4 is the pH of your blood. Now, it turns out that if that pH goes more than six tenths of a pH there, more than rather a six in either direction of the actual uh, significant figure, that you'll die. All right, if your pH, if your blood pH ends up living at like 6.6, .6, for example. All right, then that's called acidosis and you're going to be incredibly sick or if it becomes too basic. So what does your blood have to do? Well, we have a buffer system. We have a system set up to where if anything starts to throw that pH off, your blood defends itself. Here's the way it works. In your bloodstream, you have carbonic acid. That's H2CO3. Hey, is that a strong acid or a strong, is, is that strong or weak? It's weak. Now, it turns out that buffers only work with weak species. Buffers don't work with the strong species. So while you're running into tests and Schoology questions, if I ever ask you a buffers thing about like hydrobromic acid, HBr, right away the answer is none of the above because HBr is a strong acid and cannot build a buffer. You can only build a buffer from a weak species, acid or base and it's conjugate. Now, luckily we studied conjugates greatly last unit, so you're good at recognizing them, all right? And Carolyn and I are gonna talk and she's gonna become a pro by the end of the week at conjugates. But this is an acid. What is his conjugate base? CLH, CLH. All right, well we know that acids like to get rid of or gain hydrogens. Which one? Get rid of Acids, H. in general, do they like to get rid of an H or gain an H? Get rid of, so if I lose one H plus, we're gonna end up with HCO3 because now we have one H instead of two and my resulting charge will be negative. negative. All right, here's my conjugate base. Okay, wait, wait, one question. Hang on, wait, wait, let, let me finish the thought and then, okay, okay, and, yes. and then you can ask, okay? So this is what's in your blood, all right? This is the weak acid that's in your blood, and this is the conjugate base that's also in your blood. Now let me show you how the buffer works, and this is true for all buffer systems, all right? If something starts happening to your blood and some kind of strong acid starts getting added to it, which different um, diseases and uh, di different um, processes can do, if we add H plus to your blood system, it's going to interact with one of these two guys it turns out that it's going to interact with the HCO3 minus. 
And what will be formed if this ion gobbles up that acid? It'll form H2CO3. And suddenly your blood is like, I already have that, we good. What if, what if instead of H plus being dumped into your bloodstream, some kind of strong basis, all right? We'll represent that with OH, all right? What do you think he's gonna interact with? He's gonna interact with this guy here. And release hydronium and carbon. And it, it's, it's gonna make some water, but it's also going to make HCO3 minus. And again, your blood is like, sweet man, I love that stuff. All right? By the buffer system doing this, the pH is maintained because it can take any intruders, what we're gonna call them, it can take these intruders and just turn it into something that it loves. You have both of those in your blood right now. It just fixes it to the other thing. Now, shh, shh. This is how all buffers work, so don't just be like, oh, we're learning about blood today, all right? But this one is the one that you can usually understand the most because it's currently keeping you alive. Yeah. Follow her, stop it, you hurt my feelings. It hurts right here. So does that, is that how like ODing works on like, like certain chemical like drugs? If, 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 if I start going into the OD stuff, we won't finish because I can talk about OD. Forever, mom, my dad, my sister, oh my, my kids, five-year-old. Your, your kid, your five-year-old, yeah, your five-year-old is like. She sleeps really good. Okay. Um, now, in order to calculate buffers, we could use a rice table, but there is an easier route. So there's no reason for me to show you the rice table. Let's take a look at what we're going to use in order to calculate. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. This is called the Henderson Hasselbach. <laughs> and um, this equation is on your AP sheet, so you don't have to memorize it. All right. A couple things, though. First off, it's uh, it's set up to give you pH. It can be set up to give you pOH also. If you'll notice, it says pH equals the pKa. What do you think would be different there if it said pOH equals PKB. the pKb? All right. The, the the K is the equilibrium constant. The A and the B are acid versus base. Now, the Ka's and Kb's are constant values. It's important for me to point that out again because sometimes the problem won't give you the Ka or Kb because it knows you can find it elsewhere. So you'll see in all of our problems today, just as I'm trying to prepare you for the worst, the Ka and Kb that we need is not in the problem because it's on a published table somewhere. I'm gonna grab, I'm not gonna make you go online or anything, but the way that it's printed, it looks like it's missing information, but it's just a constant value that you could go find if asked to. I want to point out that the abbreviation P stands for negative log. I've said that before, but it blew a bunch of people's minds last period. All right. The lowercase P stands for negative log. That's why pH is negative log of H. So pKa is negative log of Ka. All right. So it's actually giving you a calculator stroke that you might not be able to see right away if you're unaware of that. So that would be the biggest pitfall if you ran into the equation on your formula chart but forgot that the lowercase p means negative log so don't be that student now the main part of the equation though that's less constant is the molarities at the end in order to find the ph <coughs> i'm going to be useless by here in order to find the ph you need the concentration of both the weak species and its conjugate it's a buffer so it's definitely going to have both of those things and by taking the concentration of each of them and putting them at the end all right, of the equation, the ion, the conjugate, over the species, the weak base or acid, then altogether it will give you the pH. And I don't think you'll think it's very challenging. So let's look at a problem. Can you cover up the bottom part that tells them how to do it? I'd rather, well, not with your hand, okay. <laughs> it wasn't like a big secret. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. It says calculate the pH of a solution 
that gives you a molarity of a weak acid, all right? Do you see how I can tell that's a weak acid? Carbon-containing Carbon acid, all right? But then look, now, here's a kind of special thing, though. In our buffered solutions, the conjugate is always going to start as a part of a salt, all right? Because what you'll notice is, is the weak acid has H6H4NO2, right? If I dump this salt into the water and it splits apart, it's going to become C6H4NO2 minus, which is the conjugate. So it's just a minor little hurdle, but in our buffered systems, the conjugate, the ion, is gonna be hiding inside, a, connected to a salt. So let's take a look at the equation, all right? First off, I have to give you the pKa. All right, well, just the Ka. The P is negative long, sorry. All right, because notice it's not there, but I went and found it for us on a table, and it is something. It's 1.4 E negative 5. So that'll be important. Are you going to write that on the test? Yeah. Or I might provide a table with a bunch of them and have you go and reference them. I don't know. Oh, is it, it, it your is your leg hitting the cord maybe? Yeah, I don't think that's what it is actually. Okay, so let's take a look at the equation now. Ka is connected to pH, so there won't be an extra subtract from fourteen step here. So let's let's plug and chug. pH equals the negative that it equals pKa, so negative log of one point four. E negative 5 plus the log of the ion over the species. So you need to look closely which of the values is going to be connected to the conjugate ion that's hiding in the salt. The second one. Yeah, the 0.50. That's the ion. All right, and it really, it's just the salt. If you can find the sample that's not the weak acid or base, that's the number that goes up top, all right, always. All right, so I mean, the other one's obviously an acid. It's sitting there, no charge, starting with H. He's gonna go on the bottom. And what's his number? So the weak one goes on the bottom? No, 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 that's not what I said. Wait, did you say the, I, I thought you said the big one. The weak one. Yes, the weak one, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I thought, I thought you thought that there was a different absolute there. I thought you thought that I thought that she thought, and it was not cool. So, hey, see if your calculator works. I have a question. Is there a, con there's a constant value for the KB, right? Right, you could calculate KB, what but is, I would rather you not have to go. Get, how do we get KA? It's given. It's just flat out given to you. Not in the problem. I went and found it in a published table on Google. Oh, you just found it. So it's got to be provided for you, unless you're doing Schoology at home, in which case you could go Google it. Maybe. How you just it type it in. Just say, just say Ka of HC6H4NO2. There's only one possible value. Okay. Hey, watch your sig. Ow, watch your sig figs on your answer. What? No, I'm falling apart. If I, I mean, I wouldn't have come today if it wasn't for y'all. I don't have time. We don't have time for me to not be here. Oh, that was very sweet. <laughs> no, the K, constant values never dictate sig fix. Because you didn't close. Hey, if you got an error, you did not close that parenthesis. Go back. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Do not forget to close that parenthesis. Your calculator will not allow it. Somebody shut out the answer. 4.83. Why? Two sig figs. Two sig figs. Oh, gosh, Robin. I got it. Can we move on? Wait, wait, no.
By the way, hey, the part that I'm having Barajas cover up is just the steps on how to do it, which I put it there so that it's helpful for you when I'm not around, but we don't need it during the lecture. Yeah, just keep covering them off. All right. All right, we got a new one here. Now, I can tell, shh, shh, I can tell right away that it's a buffer because the NH3 is ammonia, a weak base. The NH4 that I see in that salt would be NH4 plus in solution, which is the conjugate of NH3. So there we go, we have a weak sample and is conjugate, so henderson hasselbalk is good to go. Yeah. Yes? So when it gives us that salt, the part we're using, like the weak part will always be using. If it's not, then it's not a buffer system. Then it would be a different so kind of question. Uh, right, right. There's, I mean, most of the time, and I'm trying to think of an example where it would be tricky. I mean, tomorrow you're going to see when we do intruders that that's a big part of the decision is to figure out, okay, well, do I just have a weak sample, a strong sample? Is it... Um, hydrolysis, you know, everything's going to come back tomorrow. But, um, but yeah, so it, it has to be the perfect match. All right. So um, now it looks like we have a base there. If we have a base, what what, what given the info can I find somewhere else? KB. KB. All right. So I'll let you know that the KB here is 1.8 e negative five. I found that elsewhere. All right. And now we're good to go. Now, if it's KB that we're using, then it's not pH that we're finding in the equation. It's POH. All right? If, you put, if KB is the value that you have, it's KOH that you're going to be finding. All right? So we're going to go negative log of 1.8 E negative 5 plus the log and here's where you got to not swap it. Oh, wait. And then, well, this one's a little less interesting. What do you notice about our values here? You can't swap them. They're the same. They're the same exact. So it's just they have the same. They have the same. And it turns out that the log of 1 is 0. Exactly. So if you're smart enough to be able to see that right away that since these molarities are different that it's really just the negative log of the uh, k then you're fine if you don't see that if, if you're not mathematically inclined in that way then type the whole thing in just check your work yeah. give him a second Does anybody have the POH that the problem gave us? 4.74 or would we put 4.74 uh, five? We do that one, right? Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to? Oh, wait, I got 7.4. Yeah, sorry, that's what I got too. I said the wrong numbers. Your acidosis is acting up. Yeah, I'm going to die. Hey, that's not what it wants though. What's the pH? This attack of 14. Yo, what the heck, bro? Gosh. <laughs> Questions on what we did there? No, I'm actually really confident I'm getting it now. It's not tricks. All I can do is show. I, I tell y'all what I do, guys. I go and I look at all the different kinds of questions I can find that they've asked about this topic, and I try to show you a sample of each. Y'all think the lecture's just hard because none of the problems repeat themselves, but there's such a variety that I'm trying to show you everything. <laughs> so let's look at another common thing that I see them do. Hey, look what's happening here. Shh, shh, shh. If you look closely, it's giving you shh, shh, 
acetic acid, and then it's giving you sodium acetate. Acetic acid is a weak acid because it's carbon containing. Sodium acetate, when it splits up, is going to make the, um, the acetate ion, which is the conjugate of acetic acid. So it's absolutely a buffered system. Now, with that said, what they're doing though, is they're taking a certain amount of 120 mils and they're mixing it with 20 mils of the other. All right, what's the volume of the beaker they're building? 40 milliliters. Yeah, it's a 40 mil beaker. So it's a dilution problem. They're doing M1V1 here. Because what you need is the molarity of each part in the solution. But what they're giving you is the molarity of each part before they were mixed. But when we mix them, it's easy to find because what we can do, for example, for the acetic acid, make sure you're working with me, all right, is if we go M1V1 equals M2V2, if you look, we started with a molarity of 0.3, is that right? All right, we've got 0.3 as the molarity that starts with a volume of 20. So that's what we started with, with my acetic acid, all right? But I need to know in the solution, what is his molarity? And the final solution is 40 mils. You can either turn that, this is a ratio, so it doesn't matter. You can, but you'll get the same answer. You can turn them both the liters, turn them to nanoliters. You'll get the same answer. All right, so 0.3 times 20 divided by 40. All right, 0.3 times 20 divided by 40. And it solves for the actual molarity of my weak acid, and it's gonna be 0.15. Questions on what I did there? Yes. I found the number that's been given to us in the prior two problems. In the prior two problems, the solution already existed and it said, here's the molarity of him, here's the molarity of here. Here, it says, here's the molarity of them before they were mixed. So you, I'm finding the molarity of them while they're mixed like the other two problems did. And so now we would just repeat the same process for the Right. Why don't we use the We are, so now yeah. we need, I'm listening. Uh, so doesn't that mean mass? No, 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 molarity. <laughs> yeah, but there's no hydroxide anywhere in this problem. Right, but there's no hydroxide that's going to be introduced. Right, well, I mean, the sodium hydroxide is letting you know why the sodium has no bearing in the problem because it's got a strong parent. Because you'll see that right now I'm not going to write Na anywhere on the board because of that reason. All right? It, it, no, it, don't, it, we don't have to go down that hole. Okay. All right? So now I want to find the molarity of the ion. Okay? Same thing. My starting molarity was 0.35. My starting volume was 20. You can verify he also started with 20. All right? And remember, we, we looked at that at the very beginning. Again, I'm trying to find his molarity when he's in the final solution that is 40 mils. So if we go 0.35 times 20 divided by 40, I'm gonna get the molarity in the solution of the conjugate ion, 0.175. Well, just watch. You can trace it. It gave me both of those numbers, and I got that number because I knew that I was mixing those two numbers together. I understand the match, but because you have C2H3O2 minus. Well, because because they are conjugates of each other, right? That's a weak acid. And watch, watch, watch. All right, if I take away the H, it becomes him with a negative charge. 
So that, that, that's what makes the buffer work, is that you have to have those two items. So that's all I'm analyzing, all right? And now, I'll let you know that the Ka of acetic acid is 1.8 E negative 5. You can go and find that. If it's not given to you, it is a constant value. And now we can go all crazy. Hey, look, it wants pH, and we're using a Ka. That's good news, right? Yes. So we're going to go pH equals the negative log of 1.8 E negative 5 plus the log. Solve. See if you can finish it. Remember, it's always the item that came from the salt that gets to be the top number. It's always ion over sample, so I'm going to go 0 0.175 Seven over 0 0.150. Value, constant values never dictate sig fix. I did get that. How are we feeling? I still suck at how to get basic like Now, I don't really have anything new to show you at this point. I just found some other good released pre AP questions that, not pre AP, huh, that'd be nice. Uh -huh. AP questions that um, I just want y'all to look at it, but it's a review of stuff that we've already looked at today. So let's look at this one first. Um, First off, it wants you to recognize the other component of the buffer. So I know that some of y'all struggle with seeing this. So watch, it's not hard. It says that you're going to make a buffer and you're using ammonium chloride. All right. Now that is a salt. By definition, it is a salt. It is a polyatomic bonding makes it a salt. So if it's a salt, that means that we don't yet have the weak species, the weak acid or the weak base. Because what is he going to do when we add him into water? He's going to dissociate, all right? And that right there is what we care about. And I answered this question a while ago. Some of y'all said, well, why don't we care about the chlorine? Well, because chlorine's parent is strong, and he's not going to have any bearing, while ammonium's parent is weak, the NH4OH. All right, but a lot of y'all will get to the point where you know, I want you to get to the point where you don't even have to think about how to find the what he's the conjugate of. All right? I mean, really, guys, you can only push the H's one direction. Have you ever seen NH5 plus 2? Then don't write it. All right? What is, if we're going to move an H, you're definitely not adding it. So what does he look like when you remove the H? 
It's, it's um, there it is. It's ammonia. ammonia. All right. So now, by splitting him up, I have my weak base, and here's the conjugate acid. And now I've got my buffered system. So I'll try to find you as many ways to think about it as you can. All right. But yes, ammonium is going to act like an acid once he's split up, so he's going to donate and. Uh, hydrogen, and that's what he would end up looking like. So what does the question ask? All right, well, it goes back to what I opened the lecture with. But again, this is a release question, so the wording is good. It says, what would happen to the pH? All right, or how, no, that's not what it says. How would it resist the change in pH if you added some acid to the equation? All right, so here we go again. If I took some acid, and I added it to this solution of buffer, what's it going to interact with? The NH3. Because if you add an H plus to NH3, what does it give you? It gives you the NH4, it gives you the ion, and hooray, whatever the pH is, is going to stay constant. Letter B, what happens if moderate amounts of strong base are added? What if we add this dude here? All right. Who is the strong base going to interact with? The acid. The NH4. All right. And we know that by it doing that, my, my, acid, my acidic little partner here is going to donate over to there. It is going to form water in this case, but also ammonia. And hooray. We get to stay partying with the acids. Partying with our constant pH. Wait, so is that the answer for the question? That's the answer for A and B. I mean, I'm showing it through. I, I mean, it, it wants to know how it would resist. You could uh, be wordy if it was FRQ, but you could be wordy and say, by an addition of strong base, it's going to uh, end up producing water and ammonia, which is a component of the buffer already, therefore will not alter the pH. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. No, you're not right. You're not right. These are strong samples. Equilibrium is for weak only. It would actually break the buffer if it was an equilibrium. Yeah, yeah. We're not. Yeah, because if it was at equilibrium, that means that it would keep going back away from what it's fixing. Now, focus up, because part C is different. I want to talk about C. It's a different idea, and they like to ask about it. Part C says, what would happen? To, how would it resist the change in the pH, or what would happen to the pH if you started dumping water into it? Now, it words it. It words it in an interesting way. It says, what if you took a sample of this buffer and you added an equal volume of water? All right. So let's make up a volume. Somebody tell me how much buffer they want. 100. All right. I, okay, we'll put them together. 115. All right. 115 mils of the buffer. It says that we're going to add an equal amount of water. So how much water should we add? 115 mils of water. It wants to know what will happen to the pH. Now, look here. In our equation that's actually giving us pH, there's some constant values. Like, whatever the sample here is, whatever its pKa is, or in this case pKb, that's a constant number, right? So adding water won't change that. The negative log and log are just keystrokes. So the water is not going to change that. What does the water have the ability to change in our henderson hockelbach equation? The, the, but volume's not in the equation. Oh, but it changes molarity. It can change the concentration. Now, listen, listen. The only two components left to change are the parts of the um, fraction, all right? The concentration of the ion over the concentration of the weak species. But if we're dumping in water where they're both floating, what does diluting it actually end up doing in comparison to each other? 
nothing. They're being diluted at the same rate. In other words, if you were dividing five by five, but we diluted it, so now you're dividing two by two, what's the answer? Nothing changes. The answer to C is adding water will not change the pH. Because the only items in the equation that can even alter the pH are the concentrations of the weak ion and the weak species. Sorry, the conjugate ion and the weak species. But if diluting it is going to change them in an equal ratio, which it will, then the pH is going to end up being calculated as the same value. So what does adding water do then? It does do something. It just doesn't change the pH. What it does is it hurts the buffer. It turns out that there's a buffer capacity. It's not like your blood's protected from anything. If I open you up and start dumping sulfuric acid into your veins, you're not going to be there and be like, I got a buffer, do your worst. All right? I'm going to kill you because there is, yeah. Make me famous. You will die. Okay. Um, because even though your system is set up to stay within your pH range, you can break the buffer. Listen, by adding the water, what's it doing to those particles that are able to fight the intruders? Remember, these guys are gonna fight anything that comes in. What is it doing if you dilute it? It's spreading those particles out. It's making the buffer less able to fight intruders, all right? By diluting it, the buffer capacity is being damaged and now it won't be as strong as a buffer, all right? Until eventually you could add so much water that if you did add that H plus that it talked about in part A, that the buffer wouldn't be able to fight it off. And now the pH is gonna change. So just because you have a buffered solution doesn't mean that it's good forever. It's built a good system that can be beaten if too much is added or if you dilute it and change the capacity. So like, would they give the buffer capacity? You'll never have to calculate it in this class. And be able to answer questions in the way that I just did. All right. One more question, but no more math. I dug this question out of the 1988 AP exam. Did chemistry even exist back then? Yeah, it did, Boomer. Okay. Hey, now, it's, it's difficult to read, but if you have your slides, then you were able to read it. But he, here's the idea. Look here. You have four people that are gonna come apply for a job and the test you give them is you say, tell me how you would make a buffered system with a pH of nine. Take 60 seconds and I want you to read through their examples. All right, and by the way, you can tell it's 1988. I have never taught, I've been teaching for almost 15 years. I've never taught an Archie, a Beulah, or a Dexter. And I've had thousands of students come through my, my classroom. What's that? Yeah, I know, I've had lots of, I've had plenty of Carla. I think I have like three Carlas this year. But I'm hiring Dexter because Dexter's laboratory. Archie, Beulah, and Dexter. Okay. Hey, real quick. Shh, shh. See if you can figure this out before I tell you the answer. Read through their suggestions on how to make a buffered system with a pH of 9. There's only one person we can hire. Oh, no. Here, will you get that off? Oh my god. You missed it. I'm so mad. You missed three times in a row. I've thrown it. That is bad. Oh, it's disgusting. That's my ball. I found it on the ground. I tried to make it up there. No, so it's just for each. No, take it. All the ones where he points at the camera. Make a collage of like every I think what's more funny is out of context, Mr. Thomas. I have a clue. I will kill you. That was terrible, but that's not on video. Uh, All right, now listen. Shh, shh. Two of the applicants can't even make the solution that they're, that they're supposed to. They're, they're, they're idiots. The other two can both do it, but one of them is smarter than the other. Now, 
Let's identify the ones that definitely cannot do it. First off, we are not going to hire Beulah. Why are we not going to hire Beulah? Stupid name. <laughs> Why? Strong acid. strong acid. All right. Strong acid can't be a part of the solution. That's no good. All right. Next person that we're not going to hire, we cannot hire Dexter. Did she say this? She's strong base. All right. Yeah, not only is it a strong base, but both of them are basic. Both ammonia and sodium hydroxide are basic. There's no possible conjugate acid there. So he's double dumb, right? Oh, no. Now, if you look, if you look at Archie and Carla, both of them have created a buffer, all right? Both of them have a weak sample with a salt that contains the conjugate. Who are we gonna hire though? Carly. I'm gonna I'm gonna hire Archie. I'm, gonna for Archie. I'll hire I'm definitely gonna hire Archie. I'm still hiring Foster. We're doing sure no work. Y'all, cool. what do I want the pH of my buffer to be? Is that acidic or basic? basic? Would it be easier to build that buffer using acids or bases? <coughs> Who are we gonna hire? Carla. We gotta hire Carla. That chick, that chick knows her stuff and has a totally normal name. It's not spaghetti. I bet she's a baddie too. She's a baddie. She got old baddie. Carla C. 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 Carla C.